Hey, good morning, my little family. Um, I've just been pondering a a truth, uh, a spiritual um, reality uh, that has to do with oh the whole idea of um, of growing in our faith, but it also has to do with um, kind of how we wind up where we do. Uh, where we look and we see some people um, that look like they started off really good and then they wind up giving up or others that at the end of their journey um, they can say with a, a level of assurance even though perhaps tragic things have happened or or, or life-shattering events things that were devastating to them yet they, they can say at the end that God has been good and especially as we were um, hearing different people say different um, testimonies or uh, encouragements here uh, at Thanksgiving at church recently where uh, they'd been through very difficult things, but they were saying, God is good. And it just brought to mind a, um, a couple of verses and principles that um, I think are helpful in, 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 in understanding like why certain, you know, people can say that with a level of assurance while others who go through those kind of things um, wind up giving up and not not persevering. And in Matthew 13, um, Jesus said, For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And there's a principle that I find being taught here is that when we walk in the light that we've received, we are given more light. Uh, but the converse is also true that when we, um, when we turn away from the light that we've been given, uh, we lose what we've had and we actually uh, are, are moving away from uh, the source of light and we're moving toward darkness. And so um, as we look at um, that trend, those two trends, those are trajectories and they're, they're all predicated on, on how we're responding to the truth we've been given. When we look at the, the Romans one progression, or can I say the digression, uh, into idolatry and ultimate depravity, we see that in, um, I don't have the verses, but we, we're, most of us are familiar with that passage in Romans 1, where Paul basically charts the course of human depravity from one level to the next. And as they embrace certain lies, and reject truth that they have. It says that God gives them over to greater and greater degrees of, of darkness and sin. And the end of that is essentially described as um, that they served the creature or the creation rather than the creator. And I'll put that, send that through to a voicemail. But how many of you recognize that song? Mm, that's the... Um, name that tune for the day. But essentially what we see is that, that as they're given over, as they give themselves more and more over to worshiping um, idol idols and turning away from the living God, God gives them over to greater and greater darkness. It's that, that same trajectory trend. But it says at the very beginning of that, of that process, it says that when they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, neither were thankful. And that key word there, faithful, again, came up, I'm not sorry, not faithful, thankful, came up again this Thanksgiving as we were all expressing what we're thankful for and just con considering what gratitude actually means. Why do, why do we, why did Paul specifically say that when they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God and we can say, when they knew God, neither were they thankful. So we are talking about people who had light. However you want to quantify that or qualify it, they had light. It says that they, they had a knowledge of God. 
a, a, a vital uh, experiential knowledge of God. A, it says they did not glorify him as God. And what I would say here is they did not let let his rule uh, continue at the at critical points where they chose to either give glory to themselves, take the credit for themselves, uh, or or reject his right to be God in their lives. So it's a, really an authority and a, a pride question. Um, they also, it says, were not thankful. And why did, what, so why was that so important? I think, why was it so important that Paul mentioned it? And why do we so easily skip over that or miss it? But uh, I don't know why, but it, it, it's definitely true. Uh, we tend to not, um, not understand why that's so important. But here's why I believe it is. Um, especially as we begin to move forward in our, in our experiences with God or our relations with him or, or grow in our understanding of him, certain things hit crossroads. So, for example, why, um, you know, how do we be thankful? Uh, what do we do when things don't go the way we expected them to go? Or why, how do we respond when certain prayers or desires that we have aren't given or responded to by God in the way that we would have want them to be? And I think this is where this whole matter of gratitude is is vital will we accept his provision for our life or will we not be grateful for it would we want something else in essence this is uh it's covetousness or it could be uh envy if we're looking at well what about why does certain other people have this and i don't envy could come into there too so either way whether it's straight out covetousness because we want something that god is saying no or we want something that someone else has uh and you can see this even coming out in his uh treatment of the disciples there after the resurrection when he tells peter you know basically what his destiny is and it's it's the sacrifice the surrendering of his life and um and and peter basically says well well what about him and he's referring to john he says well what is it to you if i allow him to to remain until i come you follow me so peter was tempted with like well why why should i have to go through this what about him and it's a very natural thing but at that point the, the test is made. Are we going to be grateful? Are we going to accept what God's provision for us is? Or are we going to demand something else? And so when you put those two things together, choosing to reject God's rule in our life, choosing to seek the glory for ourselves or seek our own pathway and match that with a uh, um, an ingratitude or a demand for something something different or a rejection of what he said is good for our lives um that is uh it's at the peak at the at the at the top of that downward slide the the end of which ends in um the grossest forms of human depravity um uh, sexual sin immorality idolatry and things like that so um that's how important this whole matter of of walking in the light that we have is um, because the truth is, is that we can't control, um, we are dependent upon God to be receiving more and more light. Likewise, we can't control the levels of darkness that, that, we, that we embrace as we reject the light. And that is the essence of deception. You don't know you're deceived if you're truly deceived. You can't control the darkness. You just, we just grow in blindness and we lose what we've had so anyways um i just want to bless you guys encourage you guys walk in the light let god be god in your lives and practice gratitude practice contentment uh with the provision that he gives it is not wrong at all to ask god for uh, for the things that you desire to to express your uh, request to god and, and 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 share your heart with him and, but at the end of that that interaction, what comes down to it is not my will, but thine be done. And um, and when we can when we can 
earnestly uh, embrace God's will for our lives with a, with a grateful heart that it is good, that he is good, and that above all of that, in in at in at, toward the end of the book of Hebrews, when he when he says, um, to to be content with such things as we have, he says, "For I have promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you." The the greatest, the greatest of all gifts, is not the particular answered prayer that might be for this thing or that thing. It's the assurance and the reality that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That's how we can really be content. That's how we can offer that sacrifice of gratitude, the fruit of lips, giving thanks to his name. Right? I love you guys. Bye-bye.